So who is worse, Trump or Bush as a president? It's a tough choice. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Over the weekend, we saw George W. Bush go to the Lincoln Memorial on Fox News. He did a two-hour rally on Fox News and, um, you know, said everything's good, everything's happy, uh, we're going to, you know, put this all back together, don't worry, uh, vote for me, all this kind of stuff. And uh, he said he'd been treated worse than Lincoln. All right. Um, ask Mary Todd Lincoln about that. Um, and, and at the same time, over the weekend... George W. Bush put out a little short three, four minute video about how we all need to come together. This is a time for national unity. Just like he did after 9-11, you'll recall. He's lied us into two wars that led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Afghans and Iraqis. Over 15,000 dead Americans, 7,000 of them troops, 8,000 plus of them contractors. His, the, war, the two wars that he lied us into then spilled over into other regions, and now we've got a civil war going on in Syria. You've got a military crackdown in Egypt uh, with al-Sisi, uh, you know, torturing and murdering people. Libya is a, is a screaming, flaming mess. I suppose you could throw some of that back into the Obama administration. But, you know, step by step, right across the Middle East, George W. Bush is, well, actually, no, the Obama administration came after George W. Bush, and he was, Bush was the one who set up this whole deconstruction of the Middle East, the destruction of the Middle East. So we've got this NPR documentary now that's coming out about George W. Bush and this recent clip where he's calling for national unity, and it, it appears as a full court press on to try to clean up his legacy. So I think it's time to ask the question. Which president has done more harm to America, George W. Bush or Donald Trump? I mean, just consider, you know, uh, Bush left over 52,000 Americans with shattered bodies, an epidemic of suicide and PTSD that continues to this day. And Bush had been planning this for a while. Back in 1999, he told Miss, Mickey Herskowitz, who was the, uh, the guy that his family hired to ghostwrite his autobiography, A Charge to Keep. This is what Bush told, Herskowitz had recorded over 100 hours of audio tape of interviews with George W. in preparation for the writing of the first draft of his autobiography, of, of Bush's autobiography. And this is one of the things that Bush told Mickey Herskowitz. Keep in mind, 1999, this was before, this was back when everybody thought in 2000, Jeb Bush was gonna be the guy running for president. Right? But Bush and Rove had been planning this thing. And this is what Bush said to Mickey Herskowitz. He says, one of the keys to, be seen, to being seen as a great leader is to be seen as commander in chief. My father had all this political capital built up when he drove the Iraqis out of Kuwait. And he wasted it. By wasted, of course, uh, Bush means that he had a war that lasted only 100 hours. So three-day war. He should have had a war that ran all the way up till you know, the election. Anyhow, back to Bush's quote. If I have a chance to invade, George W. Bush told Mickey Herskowitz in 1999, if I have a chance to invade, if I had that much political capital, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to get everything passed that I wanted to get passed, and I'm going to have a successful presidency, end quote. And you'll recall right after he got reelected in 2000, January of 2005, George W. Bush, sure enough, he had run for Congress in Texas. He lost but it was back in 78, I believe it was, he ran on the platform of ending Social Security, just moving it all over to the banks in New York and making it a voluntary system, privatizing Social Security. And he lost. Surprise, surprise. And so in 2005, after he had all this political capital from winning a war in Iraq, mission accomplished, remember that? He started traveling around the country. He visited about 15 or 20 cities making a sales pitch for doing away with Social Security. And weirdly, every place he went and gave this sales pitch, his popularity ratings went down rather than up. And finally, he just gave up on it. And at the end of 2005, he said, okay, screw that, and uh, decided not to do it. So that's Bush. I mean, he, he ruined America's reputation around the world with torture, with extrajudicial murders, with uh, Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo, with the CIA destroying all the video of those tortures, 
with, uh, you know, he, he ruined our reputation by tearing us apart, by, by, you know, initially saying, well, Muslims aren't so bad, and then attacking two Muslim countries within a re-election campaign in 2005 that was nakedly homophobic coming out, of, you know, against gay marriage and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it just, this guy ruined this country, George W. Bush. And then, to top it all off, in the, in the eight years that he was president, he deregulated the banks and didn't enforce the existing regulations against the banks. And so guess what happens? The banks ripped us all off. Steve, people like Steve Mnuchin throwing people out of their homes, thousands of them, when Steve Mnuchin was a banker in California. And George W. Bush was responsible for the second greatest crash, you know, only second to the, to the Great Depression of the 1930s. So then, you know, eight years later, we get another Republican president, Donald Trump, and now we're on track to a minimum of 100,000 Americans dead. And there are reports now, the New York Times is reporting, and this is pretty shocking stuff. Coronavirus update, Trump administration models predict near doubling of daily death toll by June. Projections from an internal report, now they're, they're keeping this a secret, right? But it leaked to the New York Times. Projections from an internal report show that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention forecast about 200,000 new cases every day by the end of the month. That's the end of the month of May, which means 3,000 daily deaths by the end of May. 3,000 people dying every day. That's 90,000 people a month. And if we keep at that rate, as Trump is opening up and red state governors are opening up red states like crazy right now, the fastest growing, if you look at red states versus blue states, in blue states, you've got the coronavirus infections growing at slightly greater than 100%. The R is slightly, R naught is slightly more than one, 1.1 more or less, which is still bad. It means the, uh, the pandemic is expanding. But in the red state, you know, every, every one person infects 1.1 other people. But in the red states, it's running 1.4, 1.5. So who was the worst president, George W. Bush or Donald Trump? Who did more damage to our country? I guess, the, you know, we can't say the verdict is in because Donald Trump still has nine more months to go until January 20th when he leaves office. And, uh, you know, he could do a mind boggling amount of damage between now and then. And frankly, I think he will. But who do you think did the most damage to America? Who was the worst president? Trump, you know, the Trump's hatred, his racism, his xenophobia, his damage to international relations, his pulling us out of the climate talks. Or George W. Bush with torture, extrajudicial, extrajudicial murder, passing the Patriot Act, spying on Americans. Remember Ed Snowden, you know, revealed all that stuff to us. Who gets your vote as worst president?